like my videos just become more and more tilted. Like, each video. It's just not gonna get better. Hello, my fellow book lovers, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, Christmas time is arriving, the end of the year is near, and that always brings me into the spirit of unhauling, of decluttering, of getting rid of stuff. Might as well make content out of this. If you're new here and you don't know this, I have been on a book buying ban for this entire year, which doesn't mean that I haven't bought books. I know, quite uh, logical, right? Anyways, I wasn't allowed to buy as many books and I definitely had to do some reading in order to get a new book. And throughout the year, I've just noticed that I gravitated towards some books more than towards others. And some that I came across, I kind of silently thought to myself in my head that I would never pick up. And this is the time for those books to shine. I'm sweating. <laughs> Why am I sweating? <laughs> this is my loungewear. Oof. Okay. I think I'm nervous. I don't want y'all to judge me. So I have a stack of books here to my right. And we're just gonna work ourselves from the top to the bottom. This is how it naturally goes. Probably gonna be very rambly and not really a lot of an explanation. Just a lot of gut feeling. Um, I have no notes for this. It's just gonna be talking, me talking without any preparation, which usually doesn't go very well. By the way, if you notice that my ears are blue, that is on purpose. And if you don't believe me, you have no way of proving me wrong. This is totally how I want to look like. Like corpse bright vibes, I want to have them. That's why my hands are blue as well. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is Simeon Maigret uh, and the Lonely Man. Oh my God, I just realized this is in German. See, I'm not prepared. Anyways, this is a Maigret mystery and it is, for those of you who don't know who Maigret is, in a kind of style as Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot or Miss Marple. I think it's a criminal, uh, criminal fiction, like criminal mystery, anything like that. And it is very comfortable, let's say. It is very predictable uh, and it's, it's sort of a comfort read. You always know what you will get with those sorts of books. And lately I've been feeling so frustrated because I felt like I've been falling out of the love with reading. But I think that one factor that definitely doesn't help with me being excited for reading is when something gets repetitive, when there is a formula to it. Um, and I don't, I think that is one of these. Okay, so I just needed to change my clothes because I was dying. Anyways, so the next book that I would like to unhaul is Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl. I got that from the boyfriend of my mother uh, as a used copy. And by the time that he gave it to me, it already was out of, um, popularity I think like the hype was already passed and I just took it because you know I noticed a hype I can't really press a finger to it but I just I feel like I'm not interested in this maybe at some point in my life I will come across this one again and I will pick it up I will read it I will love it who knows but for now I want to focus my energy on other things and not pressure myself to read Gone Girl Next on my stack of books, I have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And this is... Ah, my god, I have um, a cacti on the back of, of here and I always like... It's a game of um, how close can you get without stabbing yourself. And this one I bought specifically, uh, I think about eight or nine years ago, because a friend of mine talked me into buying it. I think I was reading the black magic trilogy or something at that point and my friend was literally like oh you like fantasy so try this i read it and it was very good and i was with her at the time so i felt like very bad for if i wouldn't have picked it up nowadays i'm a bit more confident about that but back in the day i wasn't and i bought it and i felt so regretful immediately after buying it because i spent like 12 years 1290 on this and I didn't really have much money back in the day. And I was like, this book was sitting on my shelf for the past eight or nine years and it was taunting me. You know, it felt so guilty for spending that much money on a book and then never having the intention to read it. So I'm finally, I'm in a better position now, but finally I'm having the courage to get rid of it. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's just this kind of memory. I never wanted to read it in the first place. And because of this kind of inner, um, I don't know, anarchy, <laughs> inner anarchy, like inner revolt that I feel for this book. I don't want to pick it up. 
it could have like it could be the best book in the world and I, I wouldn't want to pick it up and if you loved it that's good for you I will never be able to argue with you on that one I'm not gonna read it next I have some that I got pretty recently which um, I think pretty recently is about a year, and a year and a half ago, and this is Forever and Linger by Maggie Stiefvater, and I got them out of an open bookshelf uh, around my city, like not even in my city, but I was somewhere around the area of Vienna, and I saw them, and I was like, what the fuck? Even in an English edition, what is this doing here? And Maggie Stiefvater does ring a bell, so maybe I'll just pick him up. And then I looked them up, and I realized that's the second and the third part. I don't know which is which. Second and the third part in a trilogy <laughs> was missing the first one. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> in my book buying Ben here, I'm not gonna buy the first part of a trilogy that I don't even know I, that I will continue on, you know? So I thought that I might as well just get rid of them, put them back in the open bookshelf and let someone else enjoy them. And then the next one, which I unfortunately have to confess, is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I've seen this on Goodreads, on Booktube, on the walls of my bookstore, like as if the wallpaper was made out of this book. I know how popular this book was, which was the reason for why I got it. I don't want to open myself up to criticism for getting rid of this. Uh, I actually, I'm afraid of that, okay? <laughs> I know that some people who will watch this will judge me for getting rid of a feministic piece of writing. I think it's feministic and anti-racism, is that true? I think it's pro-sexuality, pro-ethnicity, uh, pro-feminism, I think. I think, okay? It's something very, very good and empowering. The thing about this is, I saw it on my shelf this whole year. And every time that I saw it back, because the spine is beautiful, okay? It's, it's a beautiful spine. It catches the eye. Um, and I always saw it and was like, I just simply don't like anthropologies. I just simply don't like short stories. I just simply don't like that stuff. I cannot see myself reading it, so I'm getting rid of it. Which doesn't mean that that book is bad, which doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it. I just have to admit that I will never pick it up. Hopefully the person that gets that from the open bookshelf will have a great time with it. And a great time that I couldn't be able to have with this. Then I have Brecht at Night by Matt Wint. When I was in Estonia, like I spent a year in Estonia, I just wanted to, I went to the bookstores and I wanted to read a book by an Estonian person. Like that, I had set myself out to just do that. And I grabbed a bunch of Estonian books and I saw this and I was like, mm. Brecht, Brecht is German, maybe like this is cool. And now I have had this for the past five years. I didn't pick it up. I don't think that I will. The Estonian way of writing, I have read Estonian literature now. The Estonian way of writing is an interesting one, a very odd one at times. And I definitely will read more from Estonian authors in the future. But I think that I'm not gonna go with this one. And then my last two books, um, they come in a bundle, uh, because they are these ones, they are both about fear and they will not ring a bell for you either, um, but the, w the reason why I get rid of these is that I have owned them for, I think now also eight years or something, and I have specifically bought them for an assignment that I had to do for school. When you graduate in Austria, you have to write a paper. And uh, my paper that I wrote in psychology, which was one of the courses that I graduated in, was about fear. And the thing is, you had to list two proper books um, on your paper that you based your information that you were writing about on. I don't even know if I should admit this, but uh, for one book of those, I just skim read it, which is I read, I think, the abstract. <laughs> in the first uh, page of each chapter and the other one I didn't even read. I took most of my information from websites and then just listed these books additionally so that I was like able to hand in my paper. 
Scarily enough though, my teacher actually borrowed one of the books that I was supposed to be reading uh, and read it in the time that I was preparing for, for the exam. So she actually had the knowledge of what, what was inside of the book and I didn't. So that scared the hell out of me, but luckily I passed the exam, so... <laughs> that's over. I do have a couple of books left that I want to get rid of that I'm not gonna talk about because literally nobody knows those titles, they're usually in German and I've been just collecting dust on my shelves, uh, so they are not really important. I've named every title that I feel like is mention worthy on this uh, video. So that's it with the unhole and because we've been a bit talkative like I just want to take this opportunity and say something else or ask rather and that is to maybe consider subscribing to this channel if you've been watching or following my content for a little while or even if that is your first video and you've enjoyed it like consider subscribing I feel very uncomfortable saying this I have never mentioned it in my videos before uh, which is not to say that if other people do it, <laughs> that it that bothers me not in the slightest, like do what you do. I just feel like I'm pushing myself onto people when I say things like subscribe, leave a like and a comment, like you know what you want to do. You're very much capable of deciding whether you would like to subscribe to this shitty content or not. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> I've been having a bit of, uh, I don't know, a cursed subscriber count in the, uh, lately. I think the past four to five months I've been stuck at 59 subscribers and that is primarily very okay. I don't really have a problem with being at 59 subscribers. It's just that it like once in a while, every once in a while, it jumps to 60 subscribers and then the day after I will lose another subscriber so I'm stuck at 59 again. Sometimes it's the same person that subscribes and unsubscribes I don't know for what reasons, maybe it's a tactic, maybe you know more than I do on this one. Maybe it's something like the follow for follow and if they see that I don't follow them back. Um, I don't know, they unfollow or something. Sometimes though it's a new person that is subscribing and that is staying and for that I just at this point I want to say thank you for, for your subscription. The old ones and the new ones actually. And then another person that has subscribed for a longer period of time decides to unsubscribe so I'm back at 59. It's, it's really, it's like it's cursed. So I wanted to maybe take the matter in my hands a bit because I know it influences um, people's thoughts and minds to subscribe or not to subscribe. If you don't want to, no problem at all, no hard feelings. It's your preference. Anyways, thanks so much for watching if you did. Uh, thank you for your time, have a lovely evening and I'll see you at another time in another video. I forget what I'm trying to say at the end of video sometimes. <laughs>